Hey guys, Will here, welcome back to the channel. Now today's video we're going to be doing something a little bit differently. I noticed recently that my laptop, which has been my workhorse for the last almost four years now, right up until I built this new desktop machine, is starting to get a little bit slow and that was kind of what started me off on the process of wanting to build a new desktop machine anyway. But I thought, now that I've got the new desktop, I want to try and speed this up as much as I possibly can so that my wife can use it for her business. And I noticed that particularly when I was um, when I was rendering videos, it was getting really, really slow. And I thought off the back of all the testing that I've been doing with overclocking and temperature monitoring my new machine, I thought, why don't I run some of that software on this machine and see if I can figure out exactly what's going on. So I gave the operating system a good cleanup, got rid of all the files that were clogging it up and you know defragged the hard drive, all that normal kind of stuff that you would do to speed up a PC. And I found that it was still going pretty slow. So I jumped into my temperature monitoring software and found something really, really interesting. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the problem that I found with the laptop and then we're gonna cover out my attempt to actually fix the problem and then we'll come back and we'll see whether I've been successful in doing so. So this video should be an interesting one for anybody that's running a laptop that wants to maximize the performance that they're getting out of it and make sure that everything is running at its absolute best. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, so the software that I'm running here on my machine is a package called AIDA64, A-I-D-A-64. Now you can download a free trial version. I actually have the full extreme version on my desktop machine, but I didn't really need it for this purpose on this machine. But what this does is it allows you to do a stress test. It lets you, lets you do lots of things, but in this case, what we're using it for is a stress test on the CPU to drive the temperatures up to the absolute maximum and see what's going on. It lets us monitor the temperatures for the various different cores over here, which is this graph. It also shows the CPU load over here, but most importantly of all, it shows CPU thermal throttling. So CPUs have a function built into them. When they get up to over around the 90 degrees Celsius mark, they start to throttle back the voltage and the CPU core speed to stop them from basically cooking themselves. So what happens is if things are getting too hot, it scales back the performance to keep the temperatures down and you lose performance. And what I've found, and I'll show you this now, is that when I go to maximum CPU usage here, so we'll switch on the FPU and the cache and system memory. And when I start a stress test, you see, bam, the temperatures jump straight up and we'll watch those temperatures climb. There you go, straight up to 95 degrees and you can see down here, CPU throttling is at 12% overheating detected. So down on the graph here, and I'll just zoom in a little bit with the camera here and give you a closer look. There, yeah, you can see the throttling that's happening down here where it's jumping up and down and the temperature's sitting right up at that 95 degree mark. So the throttling is maintaining that temperature and you can see over here, the package temperatures. So those temperatures are way, way, way too high. So what we're gonna do is pull the bottom of the laptop apart, see if we can clean out some dust and also replace our thermal compound on the CPU heatsink to see if we can bring those temperatures down. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the bottom cover of the laptop. Now the process that you'll need to follow to get into the various components to do this are gonna change depending on the laptop that you have. So I would suggest that you jump online, look up your model and look up a disassembly guide. Often it'll be called a teardown, which sounds a little bit dramatic, but if you look up your model and teardown instructions, usually it'll have instructions for how to pull the machine apart. So the process will vary depending on the model that you have. Obviously, usually it's pretty straightforward. But um, yeah, look, don't just expect it to be exactly the same as what I'm doing here. Usually it's something to do with taking off the screws on the bottom panel, pop, popping the panel off, and Bob's your uncle. But yeah, check it out for yourself. But the principles that we're gonna be applying in this video will apply to everybody. So I still think it's a worthwhile video to do. Okay, now next thing I normally do is flip the machine over and try and get all these screws out. Now, you do need to take note that some screws might be different lengths. I know on this machine, these two back screws are a different length to all the other ones. So just take note of where they come out. What I do is I flip it over, drop all the screws out, and then see if there's any left behind. So grab all the ones that we've taken out so far. Remembering to take note of the positions of any ones that are longer. Set them aside somewhere safe. Now, do we have any left behind? So, one there still. One there. So, just two screws that are left behind. So, what we need to do now is pop the panel. So, usually it's pretty simple. Just kind of unclips. 
be very, very careful here that you don't snap any plastic clips. Just use common sense. It's not difficult as such. It's just a little bit fiddly. So don't just yank at it. Kind of work your way around. It's been particularly fiddly this time. There we go. And pop the cover off. Okay, so here we are with the system opened up and you can see over here is the graphics card cooler. So this has got a 980M graphics card in it, which is quite a high-end graphics card for a laptop. So quite substantial cooling there. And there is quite a bit of dust and crap on there. So this is the heatsink that sits on top of the graphics card processor or the GPU. And this is the heatsink that sits on top of the CPU or central processing unit. And these are what's called heat pipes here. So what happens is the heat comes up into the block it gets piped across through these copper pipes which are filled with a liquid and then it goes across to this heat sink here and you can see this heat sink is pretty small there's not a whole lot of opportunity here for thermal dissipation so it relies on the fan here working efficiently to blow through the fins of that heat sink in order to keep it cool and what's happened in my case is my fan is all choked up with dust and crap and it's not working properly so I've previously attempted to clean it out, but I've found that the bearings have actually failed inside the fan, so it's not spinning at its full speed anymore. And I didn't notice that because it wasn't making any sound anyway. So it's what's happened is the fan's not working properly, it's not cooling the CPU efficiently, and that's the reason why my temperatures are flying up. So what we're going to do is we're going to unplug this little fan here. So just being very, very careful, we just unplug it. And then we undo the screws. I'll just use a different size screwdriver. So we're going to undo the screws that are holding this fan in place. So with that disconnected, we can then easily just lift the fan straight out. And so you might find that yours is completely choked up with dust. So give it a good clean out, give it a good blow. Don't use a vacuum cleaner inside the computer because it can cause static discharge inside the machine. But what we're going to do as well in my case is we're actually going to disconnect this whole section here from the top of the CPU and replace the thermal compound underneath it with a higher functioning thermal compound that should give us better thermal conductivity between the actual die on the processor and the heatsink itself and that should also help to drop our temperatures as well. So we'll remove this as well. And we want to do this in a cross pattern because it is placing pressure on top of the CPU. So. All right, so we're gonna very carefully lift this up now. And we can see they've made an awful mess on top of the CPU, just using the standard thermal paste here. So it's like a pad that sits on top of the CPU. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean all this off, clean it off the top of the CPU as well. And then we're gonna replace it with some decent quality thermal compound, which should give us much better results in terms of cooling. So let's get into that. So what I'm gonna be using here is some cotton tips to clean off the thermal compound, as well as some thermal material remover from ArctiClean, and then finally a thermal surface purifier from ArctiClean as well. So you can buy these from PC Case Gear if you're in Australia, or just check out the links below to the products that we're using in this video from Amazon if you're overseas. So we'll start off here with the heat sink because that is the easier one to clean. Put a drop of that on it, let it sit, actually we might put a couple of drops of our interface cleaner. Let it sit for a moment. And we're just going to use a cotton tip. You can see that comes off pretty easily. I'm going to want to clean the entire surface here. Don't want to leave anything behind. So it is going to take a bit of time to just sort of get all this off. So it's interesting to see the impurities in the copper there. There's not really anything that we can do about that short of ordering a replacement heatsink, but We'll do the best we possibly can with what we have. So that's nice and clean now. We will do some final preparation before we reinstall it. So now we want to move across to the CPU and this is where you want to be really, really careful. So again, put a drop of our surface 
preparer on top. Get a clean cotton tip and just very gently clean off the surface of the dye. Now we don't need to worry too much about all this material that's kind of spread around because it's non-conductive anyway. You just need to make sure that this surface is completely clean. I will clean off the worst of this other material. You can see it mostly just sort of scrapes off. Now we want to be particularly careful in this area along here because we do have some little surface mount components and we don't want to damage any of those. So, put another drop on. Another clean cotton tip. <clears throat> go that will do so we don't want to worry about cleaning these components here too much they don't produce any heat they're just little surface mount diodes or resistors or whatever they are and they're not going to be important in the greater scheme of things it's the actual die surface here that we need to focus on cleaning so we'll just do a little bit more cleaning Okay, so next up we want to put a drop of our surface purifier on the top of the die. And again, a nice clean cotton tip. And you can see how that just evaporates away, leaving a perfect surface. We do the same thing again on our cooler and just clean away. So the next step now is to install our new thermal interface material. So I'm going to be using Arctic Silver 5 in this case. Now this is a non-conductive thermal paste which is important because obviously if we had anything that was conductive across these terminals here it could cause us all sorts of problems but in saying that it is slightly capacitive. So normally the process for a desktop PC is you put a dollop in the middle and then when you install the heatsink it kind of pushes itself flat across the surface. In this case I'm going to do things a little bit differently just because of the arrangement that we have here. So I'm going to squeeze a tiny little bit onto my die. Not too much. Just like that. And then I'm going to use a clean plastic bag wrapped around my finger like this. Now it's absolutely essential to make sure that the surface of this is clean. You might actually want to clean it with some of the uh, thermal interface cleaner first. And just simply with my finger, just kind of paint it onto the surface of the die. so that we've got a nice even spread across the whole surface and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit flaky because it will push itself flat but what that's doing is it's just making sure we've got the right amount and we're not shorting across any of the terminals and then what I do is I just put the rest of it on this like so and that should give us a nice clean interface between the two now. So we want to flip this back over. Make sure it's in the correct position. Sit it down on top of our CPU there and reinstall the screws. So again in a cross pattern don't tighten one side because it is putting pressure on top of the CPU die. So we just want to do it very, very carefully. And then we tighten it down. So one, two, three, four. 
and that is that. So now I drop in my replacement CPU fan, being careful not to squish the connector there. Reinstall the screws. And plug it back in. The lead's a little bit longer on this one than it was on the other one. So I'm just going to need to be careful how I route the cable. So that's plugged in there. Yeah, so when we put the cover on that should push nice and flat. So we're just going to put the cover on now. Probably won't put the screws in just yet, just to make sure that everything works the way we expect it to. So just sit that on there like that. We'll fire it back up and see if our temperatures have improved. Okay, so we're back up and running. We didn't break anything, which is always a good start. But you can see here, our idle temperatures are pretty much the same as they were before. And I guess that's somewhat to be expected because we're not actually putting the CPU under any load at the moment. So it's not really generating any significant amount of heat. But the true test will be when we actually hit the start button on the test there. So you can see the CPU load is sort of hovering between that sort of 0 to 10%, which is because the computer's only just switched on, so it's still stabilizing, it's still loading up all its startup items and everything. But what we'll do now is we'll hit the start button on our stress test, and we'll see the CPU load goes up to 100%. And let's see what our temperatures do now. So, instantly that is looking a lot better than before. So. Good signs, we're up to 70 degrees odd, whereas before we were pushing 90, 100 degrees. There we go, it's starting to creep up a little bit now, which we expect because it will start to heat up. You can hear the um, the CPU fan starting to spin, but it is not skyrocketing up to the 100 degrees that we were seeing before, that's for sure. And more importantly is we're not getting any CPU throttling at all going on there. You can see everything is good, no throttling detected. Now the important thing to note here as well is that this is not this is better than just a 20 degree decrease in temperature because what happens is as the processor reaches that 100% um, thermal limit that we were seeing before at around that 95 degree mark, as we explained before, it, it scales the performance back again. So we don't actually know how hot the CPU would have gotten if it hadn't scaled the performance. So chances are it would have gotten up to 120, 130 degrees. I don't know before it completely crapped itself, but this is a very, very good result. And as you can see, there's absolutely no throttling going on at all. Everything is happy. So, I'm going to call it success, job done. Okay, so that's it. I hope you guys have found this video interesting and useful. As I said, the process is obviously going to be a little bit different depending on the type of laptop you have. So, do look at the teardown instructions for your machine. Make sure you take proper static precautions. Obviously, because the CPU is actually bonded to the motherboard on these things, it's not an easy thing to replace if you do mess up. So, it can be a very expensive mistake if you do screw something up. So take your time, watch the video a couple of times to make sure that you're comfortable with what we're doing here. Make sure you've got yourself some Arctic Silver 5 or a comparable thermal compound that is non-conductive. Make sure you've got some cotton tips, make sure you've got your Arctic Clean Surface Primer and Surface Cleaner. And I'll link to all of those products in the description below for you as well. And most of all, make sure you've got the time and the patience to do it properly. It's not difficult, it's a little bit fiddly, but yeah, you don't want to be shaking around all nervous while you're doing it. Take your time, do it properly, and yeah, hopefully you'll get similar results to what we've had here. So I hope you found your video interesting and useful. If you have, please make sure you do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and the notification button too, so you don't miss the next one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.